Hey guys, this is Doug from fellowshipofthemartyrs.com and libertydisasterrelief.com coming to you from Liberty, Missouri. I'm sitting out in the garage right now in the food pantry. Um, we've got set up out here. Uh, might be a little bit shiny. It's about 90, close to 90 degrees I think today. Um, and uh, out here is the coolest place in the house just about. So I'm sitting out here to make a quick video for you. Um, let's pray real quick thanks Lord we love you and we praise your holy name we thank you please let truth be spoken help us to hear your voice and obey please give us wisdom and insight into the deep things we love you Lord amen well as much as I don't want to, as much as I'm don't want to, I'm going to talk about Calvinism. I've got a video from shoot, I don't know, a year ago about free will or predestination, and my answer on the question is yes, no, both, neither, both, neither. Uh, <clears throat> need to take a little different tack at it right now and uh, I'm not going to deal with the scriptural evidence on one side or the other I'm going to simply point out the wrongness of being either if you say you're for Calvin if you describe yourself as a Calvinist then you are carnal you are not spiritual you are a babe and you need to repent and you need to grow up 1st Corinthians 3 makes it real clear that if you say I'm for Peter I'm for Paul I'm for Apollos that you are not mature that you are carnal that you're picking teams that you don't understand the reality of the body of Christ that you are not grown up into him who is the head because you grew up into somebody else's head namely Calvin's and he is your God he is your Pope he is who you set as your head and you're in big trouble you are factious divisive you are a sect and ultimately you are a cult that's the biblical definition of what we're doing now if you say I'm for Luther I'm a Lutheran I'm a Mennonite for Menno Stevens, it's no different. No different. You fail to see the reality that if Jesus Christ is in me and Jesus Christ is in you, then we're one, and that's all there is to it. You want to be divisive and factious and dismiss anybody that doesn't agree with you on who their idol should be, namely Calvin. And you'll even modify Calvin this way or that and so the head that you've set over you is a four-point Calvin or a three-point Calvin or I'll take a little piece of Calvin you know and it's wrong and you need to repent and when I have this conversation with Calvinists they will say I'm not following Calvin I'm following the truth of the Bible and Calvin expressed the truth of the Bible so I'm following the Bible I'm not following Calvin. Calvin is not my head. But it's clear that the five points of Calvinism were a response to the five points of Arminianism and are not the totality of the Bible and are his particular understanding of the Bible and you can reasonably and rightly divide the Word of God and see that he's not entirely all the way right just like the Wesleyans, just like the Nazarenes, so many others that have, that have gone a little too far, stretched a little too far, set themselves a little too proudly in a place where they're sure they understand God and they've got him all figured out. When Solomon, who the Lord said was the wisest man on all the earth, tried everything, tested everything, and at the end says, 
It's all vanity. It's all vanity. The end of man is this. Love God and obey his commands. That's it. Obey God and die. That's all there is. I have yet to meet a Calvinist that has a right and proper understanding of what the body of Christ is and expresses by his or her behavior and love for the brethren a real mature sense of the big picture. They tend to be intellectual and argumentative, self-righteous, easily dismissive of anybody that disagrees with them and fundamentally unwilling to fellowship with other parts of the body uh, in, a, in spirit and in truth. At a ministerial association, <coughs> they'll go to a pastor's breakfast and they'll be polite, but it's like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and Paul knows all I got to do is bring up the topic of the resurrection of the dead and they're at it. And here we go. A ministerial association breakfast. All you got to do is stand up and say, I hear God and God speaks to people and the gifts are real and for today. And man, it's on. <laughs> it's just a thin veneer of politeness that is not loving each other in spirit and in truth that is not fellowshipping one with another, that is not laying down our walls and our divisions and our boxes and really being one forgiving our trespasses understanding that some people are immature that, that they're carnal that they're not as grown up as they should be identifying the true elders wherever they might be not just the elders in your building who might just be four-year-olds in a room full of three-year-olds and the true elders are someplace else in town but you don't know them because you won't play nice with them I don't know if the Lord is going to let me put some of these videos online right now. Because he's real fed up. And I'm going to have to hear real good whether this anger inside of me is him or me maybe just not having my cup full and wanting to tee off on people. But I'm pretty sure it's him. Because we're running out of time and we need to start playing nice. And if you define yourself by the name of a man, you're wrong, period, flat wrong, just by virtue of that, just by virtue of that, you prove that you are carnal and immature and do not understand the spiritual things of God. You have chosen a man as your head and you have let him direct your paths. You are either of Christ or not. If you are of Calvin, you're in big trouble. You need to be sure who it is you're following and who it is you've set as your head. If you test everything against Calvin instead of testing it against Jesus, you're in trouble. By and large, the Calvinists that I've met don't hear God in an appreciable moment by moment direct all your paths way. Why? Because Jesus isn't their head. Brethren, repent. There are pieces of Calvin's theology that are right and valid and true. And there are pieces that are wrong. He was not a very nice man. Luther was not a very nice man. We credit him for the Protestant Reformation. But there were people that were out in the woods the whole time before Luther protesting and getting killed and then getting killed by Luther because they didn't believe in infant baptism there's a lot of bad fruit with these guys because they're men and they are not to be who you follow more on this if God makes me 
lots of other stuff at fellowshipofthemartyrs.com.